Today we have a highly anticipated review of a product that's been making some waves in the crowdfunding space. People seem to go nuts for these all-in-one systems, and this one in particular has left me thoroughly impressed with some of its capabilities, but also somewhat disappointed in many other areas. So without further ado, this is the review of the Gevi 2-in-1 Grinder and Pour Over Machine. Yes, they need a new name. Gevi is not currently a brand that I think most of us would currently associate with specialty coffee. And let's be honest, if this machine was instead branded like this, this, or maybe even this, it would be receiving a whole lot more hype right now. Until now, Gevi's coffee portfolio has been exclusively sub hundred dollar grinders and espresso machines. So this unit not only represents their first entry into the pour over segment, but also a huge step up in terms of price point compared to what they normally produce. For that reason, I'd like to start by talking about the build quality and design to see if this feels like a product in its new price bracket. Speaking on looks alone, I think it looks pretty awesome and is definitely something I can see myself leaving out on the counter. It's modern, metal, and has a neat lighting effect in the water reservoir. My only gripe with the looks would probably be the large logo displayed front and center, which I think detracts a little from the overall sleek look. At first glance, the build quality also seems quite good, with almost every external surface other than the touchscreen and hopper being made of metal. Perhaps mixing in a couple other materials like wood or rubber would have been nice, but now I'm definitely nitpicking. The shell is made of die cast aluminum, meaning that this whole system weighs only 16 pounds. So you can move it around relatively easily, but you're probably going to want to still leave it sitting in one place. Two areas that didn't quite live up to my expectations were the grind dial and the display. The dial doesn't have a very satisfying or reassuring click between settings, and while the touchscreen serves its purpose well, I think that the graphics used are a little toyish in comparison to the more modern look of the machine. Quickly running through a few more specs to round out the overview, the machine has an approximately 10 inch by 10 inch footprint, with a height of 17 inches to the top of the bean hopper. The grinder features 60 millimeter flat burrs that are vertically mounted, with 51 total grind steps between French press coarse and espresso fine. There is a built-in scale if you'd like to weigh and single dose your beans. The water tank can hold up to 640 milliliters at a time, and water delivery is accomplished by a set of three rotating nozzles, which can be programmed in a huge variety of ways that we'll get into in this next section of the review. At its core, the Gevi is a burr grinder, a scale, a kettle, and a water distributor, all intended to work together through one central touchscreen and brain. The beauty of a fully integrated system like this is that you can make it as hands-on or hands-off an experience as you'd like. They've even gone so far as to separate the whole program into two distinct modes, beginner and master. The beginner mode has all the same brewing options as master, but simply adds in some extra steps and clicks for things such as adding beans to the hopper, placing the carafe under the correct spouts, etc. Making it a good option if you have guests coming over who you'd like to be able to use the machine completely on their own. But otherwise, I see the vast majority of users immediately turning the machine into master mode to avoid a bunch of unnecessary clicks. Brewing modes are again split into several options, depending on how involved you want to be. However, in all of the brewing modes, the screen displays live information including flow rate and total volume poured, as well as a graph that plots them both over time. Barista mode basically allows you to use the machine like a very accurate gooseneck kettle. You can set the water temperature, stop and start the pouring at will, and even adjust the flow rate between pours. Speaking of flow rate, I measured it using my normal brewing scale and I was shocked at how perfectly spot on it was. 3 milliliters per second results in 30 milliliters being delivered in 10 seconds. 
There is a little delay between when you press stop and the rest of the water exiting the system, but the interface appears to be offset so that the number you see on the screen is the number you end up getting in the cup. Pretty impressive. The next mode is what I imagine most people will opt to use, which is the My Recipes mode. As you'd expect, this mode allows you to program in and name multiple recipes of your choice. You select the dose, grind setting, brew temp, and brew ratio before being presented with a screen that allows you to fully program in the volume and flow rate for each pour, as well as how long to wait before the machine starts the next one. In a single recipe, you can program in up to 10 of these individual pours. Something I liked about this screen in particular is that after you add in a new pour, the next pour's default volume adjusts based on how much water is left to achieve your desired brew ratio. When you go to recall the recipe, it will also remind you how much to dose on the weighing screen, and then also what grind setting before grinding, which is a nice touch. For those who just want coffee in the least number of clicks possible, you can use the machine's built-in recipes. All you need to do is choose a strength and volume in cups. The grinder will then intelligently dose based on what grind setting you're at, and after you move the Chemex over, it will also pour the water for you, based again on the number of cups and the strength that you've chosen. In this default mode, there is an initial blooming pour, followed by three more rounds of pours to reach the total desired volume. Obviously, these predetermined settings won't be ideal for every coffee, but that's not really what this mode is targeting. So now we've run through all those different modes, but how is it to actually use on a daily basis? The workflow on the Gevi was potentially one of its biggest strengths. That turned out to actually be one of its biggest weaknesses. Like I mentioned earlier, the advantage of having an all-in-one system like this is that you can control everything from one central screen, whether it's weighing your beans, grinding, dosing, setting the flow rate, setting your temperature, it's all done centrally. The disadvantage of this is that the way you can use this machine is completely dictated by the software they've put in it, which as of right now is in need of some serious tweaking. For example, you can't use the scale outside of one of those three brewing mode workflows. You also can't start a pour unless you've gone through the dosing and brewing screens in one of those workflows. And the water doesn't even start boiling until you've already ground and dosed your beans, which wastes about three minutes of time. To get around this, my current process is to turn the machine on and immediately use the kettle mode to boil the water. At this point, it would be nice if I could also be weighing and grinding my coffee, but no dice there. Once the water is heated, I then pre-wet my filter paper, again using that kettle mode. Then it's pretty smooth sailing. I go back to the main menu, select my recipe of choice, dose using the built-in scale, grind, and the machine takes care of the rest. I think that Gevi would be wise to follow in the footsteps of Decent Espresso and include a USB port somewhere on the device, so that they could continue to push software updates after the units have been physically delivered to the customers. The good news is that there's lots of people in the coffee space and lots of YouTubers, including myself, giving feedback on these pre-production units to Gevi, so hopefully some of this stuff does improve by the time that they ship. All right, we have spent a lot of time talking about the physical machine and all the functions. Now, let's talk about how each of the individual components actually performed, starting with the grinder. It was surprisingly quiet, which is a huge plus. Other than being quiet, the grind quality also exceeded my expectations, being able to produce some really enjoyable cups, which is far more than I expected from a built-in grinder. Retention was also manageable to around 0.2 or 0.5 of a gram, assuming you give the lid a tap or two at the end. As for the grinding range, I was able to grind fine enough for espresso, but you only have about 10 steps in that fine range, so it would be a bit tough to actually dial in a shot. As for those modes that attempt to intelligently dose based on the grind size and time, they were okay, managing to keep things within a plus three to minus three gram range, but of course I'm gonna recommend that you single dose, especially considering there's a scale built right in. Speaking of that scale, 
It was, however, one of the weaker parts of this machine. It was very slow to respond, taking several seconds to zero and then sluggishly moving as I added or removed beans. Its accuracy is also rounded to 0.5 of a gram, which is not a huge deal, but obviously a tenth would have been nice. Generally, the scale just seemed like a bit of an afterthought, especially considering you can pick up a good one like this for around 15 bucks. The actual brewing performance was undeniably the standout feature of this machine. Having the ability to control the flow rate with milliliter precision was unbelievably cool. And then having the ability to program in each individual recipe and each individual pour really took it to another level. Now, I am someone who personally enjoys manually making a pour over, and there will surely be people down in the comments telling me how stupid a machine like this is but it is something that is tough to replicate. Creating a delicious, super precise recipe and then having it repeated back to you every day at the one push of a button while you walk away and make the rest of your breakfast is something that cannot be discounted. And the price of this machine is not just the super precise pouring, there's also a really good grinder built in as well. However, even the brewing was not without some flaws. The nozzle spins at a constant speed of 15 seconds per rotation, which means that if you want to soak all your coffee on the first pour, you need to pour for at least 15 seconds, which at the slowest flow rate of 3 milliliters per second is still a total of 45 milliliters. It would be really nice if this rotation speed was adjustable so that less water could be used while still accomplishing a successful bloom. Brewing height was also a concern. It was clearly considered for the Chemex that comes included, but for smaller batches, I think some people will want to use things like an Aurea or a Stag X. But to get these to a reasonable height so that there isn't water splashing everywhere, you'll need to awkwardly prop them up on something. Having a built-in height adjustment would have been a great piece of design foresight here. And finally, we have probably the single largest issue with the Gevi, which is the brewing temperature. In the settings, you can only go up to 96 degrees Celsius, or 205 Fahrenheit. I have no idea why, as it can boil up to 100 C in the kettle mode, and this should be something relatively easy to fix before launch, but as of right now, that's a really big miss. And so, two review units later and three months later, I'm left kind of sitting on the fence about this system. When they approached me to review it, I knew I loved the look, I didn't know how the build quality would stack up, and I wasn't sure if I would actually even use it. After spending some time with it, I can say that I am sold on the idea of an automated, hyper-accurate, programmable pour-over setup. It's convenient, it makes great coffee, and it's definitely a conversation starter. What I'm still unsure about is the execution of this product as a complete package. It gets 90% of the way there and does some incredible things that keep me coming back to use it almost every day. But seemingly poorly thought out elements like the scale, like the user interface, like the pouring height, like the maximum temperature are what's currently stopping me from giving it a full recommendation to you. I receive this for free for review and I am enjoying using it, but I'm not sure if I'd put out my money on the full MSRP. Some part of me wonders whether they would have been better off just selling this as a super accurate programmable water distributor and leave the grinding and dosing out of it. This was quite possibly my most on the fence review yet, but I do truly hope that all that information helps you to decide whether you're interested in considering this product. Also remember that this is a pre-production unit still and some things can change before it finally hits the market. If they do, I will do my best to update them down in the comments or even release an update video if they send me an updated version. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please leave us a like and even consider subscribing if you want to see some more like it in the future. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.